What is up guys, it's your boy Solam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. And before you say anything, yes, I know I'm playing Cataclysm right now. That doesn't really matter though, I'm doing some dailies right now, reposting some auctions, doing daily quests and daily, daily dungeons. That being said, what I'm playing doesn't matter, we are watching a video today. And we'll be talking about the topic of what exactly happened to Season of Discovery. Now for this, we have a brand new video, well I say it's brand new, but it's been up for 3 days. And um, I want to check this one out. It's a video by Smooth Dash Gaming. I'll be leaving a link to this down below so you can check it out as well. And I'll be posting it right now so you can check it out to give it a watch, give it a like, and show some support to Smooth Dash Gaming. Now, either way, today we're watching the video What Went Wrong for Season of Discovery. And um, I have quite a few opinions on this myself, so we'll see what he has to say. And then we'll see if I agree, disagree. I'll be chiming in with my opinions all the time. So even though it's a seven minute video, I'll probably gonna end up being 15 minutes or something because I have so much I want to talk about when it comes to I don't want to say the downfall, but let's be realistic. There's a lot of people that have jumped ship for uh, for Season of Discovery, and we'll be talking about exactly why. Now, before I get into the reaction, though, I want to show you guys something that I thought was kind of interesting. I've made some polls for Season of Discovery as well, where I tried to basically gauge some interest for Season of Discovery on my channel, and based on my most recent poll, keep in mind I'm making a bunch of Season of Discovery content as well as Cataclysm content, and in general just classic wow content i've been hyper focusing on classic wow recently even though there's a little bit of mist upon daria and retail in there as well there's a bunch of classic wow it's 99 percent classic wow for now and um, basically my audience is classic wow enjoyers classic wow players classic wow watchers people are interested in classic wow and based on this pull six days ago are you going to play phase four season of discovery only 37% out of 2,000 votes are saying yes, and 63% are saying no. Now, there are some comments here as well as to why they are or aren't playing, so you can take a look at those, just to get an idea of why people aren't playing. So going into the comments of this post, once again, a bunch of people saying no, a couple of people saying yes, basically one third yes and two thirds no, give or take, according to this poll. And um, based on the comments, we can see some people have quit and they just lost all of the desire to play back in phase three. And some people are overly enthusiastic about phase four as well and just looking forward to phase four which is definitely fair, and just a bunch of different comments talking about why they either are excited or are not excited about uh, the next phase. Now, what's really interesting to me here is that I made a similar pull back over a month ago. This was before they announced anything about phase 4, which has almost the same amount of votes. It's 1.8, the previous one had 2k. Back then, it was 50-50. Now, what to me is like really interesting here is that the other pull was made after the announcement of Phase 4 and the release of the public test realm, which means that as people saw more of Phase 4 and they realized what was coming in Phase 4, more people have jumped off, like have jumped ship after knowing what's in store in Phase 4. And the more news we get about Phase 4, the more people have jumped ship. Like, obviously, 2000 is not the biggest pool of people that you can have here, but it's still worth looking at, and it's it's definitely a significant amount, especially considering it's my channel and um, it's my audience, it's a significant for my content at least. Either way, I thought those were some really interesting statistics worth looking at before the video, so here we go. What exactly went wrong for Season of Discovery? So, in the past few weeks, we've had a few more updates on what's to come in Season of Discovery for Phase 4. And upon its release, Season of Discovery was the stylish and attractive new game mode for WoW, promoting the long-awaited vanilla with a twist, and ultimately what was a year-long secret beta for Classic Plus, where such news at BlizzCon had Classic Andy's new players and some closeted Hated retail game. Classic fans coming over to rejoice and try things out, and boy, was the start of Season of Discovery an absolute boom and huge success for WoW, seeing a hike in new players and returning players alike, with Season of Discovery seeming 
trying to steal the limelight as the hot new model on the scene, much like Hansel from Zoolander. Season of Discovery is so hot right now. Season of Discovery. However, and to put it bluntly, <laughs> Season of Discovery has stopped dead in its tracks and seems to be in an ultimate state of limbo, with its raging popularity having declined in each phase, with essentially Phase 3 going on for so long no one really knows what's happening anymore. Besides the fact that it seems like the season of winter, everything has died and everyone's inside. So just what? I feel like phase 3 has been going on for a little bit too long, now I'm gonna say this once again, this is not the default of the classic WoW developer team, because they're working on both classic, like Cataclysm classic, and Season of Discovery, and I'm sure some of them might even be working on retail, so they're just really spread thin. This is a decision made from Blizzard from not hiring more people, so um, alternatively, I'm not sure who's at fault here. Probably Blizzard on top for not hiring more people, not spending more of a budget on WoW, or Classic WoW as a whole, and just holding back on the money they want to spend because they want to keep more for themselves, instead of increasing the, qu the quality of their product. So. Um, TLDR phase 3 has been going on for way too long. I mean, once again, referring back to the posts, like one month ago, 5015 was going to play phase 4, one month later, 13 more percent have now fallen off, which could be due to them not liking what they see on the PTR for phase 4, could also be another 4 weeks of playing phase 3 and just simply getting bored. And when you get bored of something and you quit, chances are you don't come back is happening with the season of Discovery, and why does it seem that its once huge popularity is dwindling? Let's find out. But just before we jump in, feel free to like and subscribe if you're new here, as it helps me out a bunch. So thanks very much indeed. Now, let's get on with it. So originally, and quite a while ago now, we had a huge update teaser for Phase 3, which also brought about a decent chunk of information about Phase 4. Seeing some great additions to the game like dual specs, further itemization for the long term, and the addition of a 20-man molten core raid, and a little bit here about Endgame. And recently, we've had further patch notes going into the more specifics over what's happening in Phase 4, announcing that unlike in other phases, Phase 4 will have a PTR, and that certain runes we found earlier in the game will now just become normal skills, that each class will naturally have at lower levels, as well as the fact that Molten Core will also now have a few hard mode options to try and spice things up a bit. So realistically from the patch notes it does seem that Phase 4 is beginning to resemble more of what a true Classic Plus version of vanilla would look like with some of these changes that are coming along, simply to polish up certain areas of sod that felt a bit too out of shape. And whilst I think a lot of these changes are good and will help Season of Discovery, to me and to a lot of people this just feels a little too late at this point. And unlike other phases I've not seen many people getting really hyped about these updates, so why not? Well, I suppose you need to take a brief look at what made Season of Discovery so popular at first. So it's undoubtable that for Phase 1 in Season of Discovery, it was probably one of the best experiences I've had for the launch of something new in WoW in a long time. And it's... Yeah, the same. Phase 1 was super, super, super fun. And when I ask myself why in retrospect, it was because everything was new. The runes were brand new, the level up raid was a new thing, um, the PvP event of Ashenvale was also new, and there was just so many new things in the game. And even though in phase 2 they kept adding new things, they followed the same formula. Back in phase 1, runes themselves was a new thing and the way you acquired the runes was a new thing, level up raid was a new thing, and the pvp event also, new thing. Now in phase 2 they took the formula of phase 1 and added that in phase 2, where we had a level up raid, you had the runes, and you had a pvp event, and they also added the skill books and stuff like that. I thought phase 2 was good by the way, but not compared to phase 1, phase 1 was peak and every phase afterwards just got worse and worse, and I think it's just like one of the reasons, that there's multiple reasons here, one of the reasons is um, following the same formula. Like, when the formula is brand new, everything about it is new and exciting, when you follow the same formula for three phases, at some point people pick up that you're following a formula, and it stops being exciting. To me, level up raids are no longer exciting, especially when they give lackluster loot. Like, for example, in phase one, they gave you really good loot, and you wanted to do the raids for the loot. In phase two, as a caster, you sometimes did the raid for a plus one spell power increase, plus two 
2 spell power, or sometimes even just plus intellect. Phase 3 was the same, Sunken Temple plus 1 spell power plus 2 spell power plus 1 intellect, until they buffed the loot 4 weeks ago, and that buff should have been there from the start. They could just make us more powerful, and also make the raid bosses have more health, or make raid bosses also more powerful. Because the thing is, doing a raid, you are looking for raid quality upgrades. You're not looking for a plus one intellect. I, I don't know, there's, there's so many things, but those are the two that I can think about. Like, specifically in the formula thing. So the things just stopped being new because they're following the same formula. And in phase one, there was just so many new things to discover. And in phase two, there was so much less new things. You had the runes, but at this point, we had gone through that before. We had found the runes, and in phase two, we found them super fast, because now we knew kind of what to look for. Either way, uh, let, let's continue. Certainly matched the hype for previous classic launch also. The community had been asking for a new twist on Vanilla WoW and it was here to deliver. I think honestly half the appeal was simply being back in the vanilla world, but with so many people in it to reignite that true MMO feeling which does go amiss in WoW nowadays. And phase one just felt like there was a lot more. I know I just talked for a long time, but I'm going to talk about this one as well. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I could be completely out of my mind, but I strongly believe one of the reasons why people keep coming back to Vanilla WoW is that world element. If you're playing retail, the world is like, doesn't matter at all. Especially now in Dragonflight, we have dragon riding. We're just zooming all across the place. We're teleporting, we're being summoned, teleports, 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 and teleports. We have portals to pretty much every single city, inside every single city. So we just have portals everywhere. All of the important content is instanced. In Classic WoW, the world is a huge thing. First of all, leveling takes a while. Leveling is difficult as well. You want to find people in the open world and queue with them. Or I say queue. Um, group up with them and do elite quests. In Classic WoW, Vanilla WoW, there are so many dangerous quests. Some of them aren't even elite quests. They are just tightly packed mobs together to the point where you want to have a group for that quest. But many places also have elite quests where you want to and you're incentivized for teamwork and grouping together. And the world itself plays a huge element, like the quest, for example. When it comes to questing, for example, take a, take a lion's here. You go through Elven Forest to Westfall, over to Red Ridge, into Duskwood, back to Elwyn, uh, yeah, back to Elevin for a couple of the um, Red Ridge quests, then back to Westfall, back to Red Ridge, back to Duskwood, back to Westfall, back to Duskwood. There's a bunch of quest lines that takes you through the zones and really tells you what the lore is, there's a reasoning behind the quest, and the quests guides you through the world. They really want you to see everything they made. And then came phase three. They gave us incursions. From level 25 to level 50, all you had to do was run a lap in two different zones that took you 10 minutes. A 10 minute lap, do this on repeat in two different places, one place from level 25 to 40 and the next place from level 40 to level 50. They invalidated, first of all, they invalidated the need for teamwork while leveling. Even though you want to have a group for incursions, you don't need one. And there's less like, there's less of the teamwork. You just make a group together, you just spam, run quests, and when one person leaves, you instantly replace them. There's no bonding. In, in those runs, like there is in dungeons, when you're, queue, when you're grouping for a dungeon and walking for half an hour to the entrance, there's bonding, like teamwork, friendliness, you make friends. You don't really make friends in incursions, people don't care who you are. They invite you, and the more quests you have to share, the more invites you get, or the more likely you are to be invited as well. They took the need to quest out, they took out the need to be in the open world. That way you also see less people in the open world, because now they're all doing incursions. Which even though it's not e exactly instanced, it kind of is, because you're stepping through a portal to a different instance of the zone. So it's an instance, but it's holding more people than just your group. I really hate incursions. I think incursions are the antithesis of what Classic WoW is, but um, I could be wrong on this, but I, I hate incursions. They have no place in Classic WoW. They would be fine if they're a daily quest hub, but being able to just spam the same cycle or like circle for 25 levels, no. It's a retail world event hub 
with repeatable world quests. That is what it is. It's a world quest hub where the world quests are repeatable. It's retail light. New things in it to put it in simple terms. There was a lot of runes with really cool quest lines. For example, I loved getting Divine Storm, having to group up to kill demons that were slightly too high level for you, as well as the runes which you accidentally discovered and took far less time to get, feeling almost like Easter eggs except they were actually useful. And of course, Ashen Veil vale was booming, although it's debatable how PvP focused it actually was. And to be honest, I also really enjoyed the raid in Phase 1 as well. And being capped at level 25 with these new specs to try out was pretty good novelty to be honest, and everyone being restricted to running around the world made the world feel huge. However, this novelty wore off pretty fast in Phase 2, and although I loved running Scarlet Monastery with abilities like Divine Storm, finally making my rep paladin feel like he was doing something worthwhile for a change in vanilla, the raid of Nomoron didn't really appeal to me all that much, but I thought the PvP addition to Stranglethorn Veil vale was a cool concept. But still, there felt to be fewer new additions to Phase 2, and we were mostly using the same things from Phase 1, which was fine in some ways, but alas, things felt slow. Lower. And Phase 3 brought about Nightmare Incursions, which looked very cool at first, but once no. in the game felt very out of place for me, and yeah. I didn't really enjoy them all that much. I liked the zones, and I loved seeing the huge portal and thought the concept was cool. And I get they were trying out a new levelling system, but realistically, I'd have preferred these zones to have maybe been turned into some new dungeons and questing areas, and I mean normal questing areas, rather than the strange system we got. As although we get revamped dungeons turned into raids for Season of Discovery, we technically hadn't had anything brand spanking new, and I feel the Nightmare Incursions would have been the perfect time to try out a new dungeon for Season of Discovery. And I think in Phase 3, the level cap not being at max anymore, and still using a lot I think even if they wanted the incursions to be a leveling system, or even a catch-up system, or an alt leveling system, or something like that, they could have done it so differently. Instead of you being able to spam the same circle on repeat like we are now when we were at the start, make it a daily quest hub but double or even triple the experience gained from those quests. That way, if you're leveling an alt, you are still incentivized to do these quests, because they could give you, let's just put a number out there, one level in 20 minutes, but only once per day. So you would still have to spend 10 days of leveling then, or like 10 days of just doing those dailies, to go from level 14 to level 50. Just double or triple the experience gained from the quest, but make them daily. That way it would still be really good for leveling, it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't take the need out of the open world, because if you want to level from 25 to 50, assuming you get one level every single day, you would either spend 25 days doing dailies, or you would use this as a big boost, and then go back in the open world, or back and do dungeons or something like that, but you can still come back here every single day for a big boost, and then if you want to play more that day, you would still do open world content. That could be a good fix. A lot of the skills we already had from Phase 1, alongside the Meta Elite coming out and hardcoring Season of Discovery, saw the excitement die out for me in Phase 3. And whilst the speculation is that Phase 3 has gone on for too long in order to give Cataclysm Classic a decent runtime okay. at launch, I don't particularly buy it. Personally, it just feels more like the free-natured lack of planning in Season of Discovery has finally caught up with the team. Now, being capped at lower level did have its charm for me, like I said, but the novelty wore off incredibly fast pretty much after Phase 1. Part of the of vanilla is its slow pacing, but my lord is it incredibly slow when you're running around, to then be capped at running around, to only get your mount at the end of phase 2, where you didn't even need it really until phase 3, and it was an odd setup that I think grinded down a lot of people's patience, but to me it did really feel a lot of the time that once you hit level cap at lower levels, things just came to a halt pretty quick, and the previews haven't got me mega hyped either, we're just heading back to Molten Core and you can make it a little harder at this point. People love vanilla and so do I, and if this was vanilla fresh fresh servers, I'd be buzzing to get back into Molten Core, but this is meant to be vanilla with a twist, and well, the twist is no longer feeling all that twisty, and realistically, I think a lot of people have already tuned out, either in earlier phases simply waiting for endgame, so they have more content to do at once, or just waiting for a full classic plus at this point. So I think as a blanket statement, and to put it simply, the hype they had banked from phase 1 and 2 has now left the building after 6 months of the same thing. I'm still interested to see what gets added at max level, and ultimately testing had to take a quick break there because my cat was being annoying, but um, yeah. One of the things that I want to chime in and say here is that I think Blizzard is focusing too much 
on the end game of Season of Discovery and not enough on the leveling or the world itself. And um, that could be something that not everyone agrees with me on because I do know that a lot of people are just here for the end game anyway. The problem is we had the Season of Mastery, which I played by the way back in the days. This was like, is it three years ago now? Three-ish, something like that. It's been it's been a few it's been it's been some time, but season of mastery was only classic WoW with harder end game, more difficult end game. There was a small other things as well, like for example, you could get um, black lotus randomly from high level herbs and more elemental stuff from herbs and mining as well. So more elemental earth from mining and elemental fires from herbalism, for example. But um, you also had anti-boosting mechanics, so no mage boosting, like Sulfarak anti-mage and um, Moradin anti-mage boosting mechanics. But for the most part, the big selling point for Season of Mastery was the increased difficulty of raids. Which Season of Mastery didn't really end that well. It lost players really fast. Now the ones who stayed, they really stayed. But it lost a lot of hype super fast, and Season of Discovery they're doing what I think is the same. They're focusing a lot on the end game and making the content harder. When it comes to Classic WoW, I have this feeling that the reason why, like one of the reasons why, people return to Classic WoW is that they don't like difficult content. Look at what happened back in the days. Why did people go back and play on Nostalrius, for example? When did Private Service come out? In Ulduar. Well, I, th I think, like, OG Ulduar was when you saw a big boom in Private Servers back in the days, like, l a long, long, long time ago, because that was difficult content. And um, now as well, in Cataclysm, or like in Wrath Classic, a lot of people came back to Classic WoW around the Ulduar times. We had the hardcore boom, classic fresh, right, all of that stuff, around Ulduar times. And now in Cataclysm, even more difficult content. And what do we see? Season of Discovery, we have a brand new classic fresh movement. I don't think people play classic WoW for difficult raid content. Maybe that's just me, maybe I'm being dumb. But I think people like the raids being somewhat easy. You you get into a group with your friends, you just have a good time, you do a raid, you get some loot. That's it. And the less you have to do in the raid, the better. You just want to sit there, do the raid, have a good time, get loot. In Seasonal Discovery, they're maybe focusing too much on making the raids difficult and making too much focus on the end game. Even though I think uh, a lot of people are playing it for the end game as well, so it's, it's a hard concept, it's a hard thing to balance. But I would love to see more focus on the open world and the new quest hubs. Make new zones, finish off the zones they already have in the game, give us more dungeons while leveling. Turtle WoW. People wanted Turtle WoW, we got Ascension. It's just what it is, people wanted something like Turtle WoW. If you played Turtle WoW, you know what I mean. They added quest hubs, they did class changes, didn't really make any insane changes, but it works. Paladins, Red Paladins are more playable, Prot Paladins are more playable, uh, Shamans are more playable, Boomkins are more playable, and they didn't really break anything. And they have High Yellows, and they have Goblins. I'm just saying. They also even made brand new custom zones. We could see some of those zones, or make, make new zones. Take the zones you already have and do something with them. Put in new quest hubs. Things out at 60 for the end game, but I'm not rushing back in the same way I originally was. But I think the mists of Pandaria Remix showed us that you can just throw the rulebook out the window and do what you like in an experimental game mode, which is what Season of Discovery was advertised to be, with the Mop Remix acting as retail's version of Season of Discovery in many ways. And it went over the top, making your character far too powerful, blasting through everything, but then made mistakes with scaling, which meant sometimes your character simply dies to anything. And for me, that was really half the appeal. It seems to be a huge learning learning step for developing new versions of WoW, to see what works and what doesn't work at a rapid pace, and see what people respond to. And to do such a thing you have to make big bold decisions and act fairly fast to change it next time. And where phase 1 of Season of Discovery brought this boldness to it, the other phases we have haven't really done this. It feels like it's been played a little bit safe to be honest. And I mean even for vanilla standards it feels held back. And we probably should have been at level 60 a few months ago, so we can properly get and see how endgame would work, or maybe really 
realistically what a Classic Plus would play like. Overall, I'll probably still play Phase 4 when it finally arrives, and seeing what the vibe is and how classes have been reworked. And I'm glad they're tweaking things to make it seem more sustainable. But to be honest, I'm still waiting for something right, big, dude. and maybe we'll get that with Endgame. But I just feel all of this could have been coming a few months ago to keep the hype alive, or have a bit of ambition. Or at least teased us that something big is on the way, and it's not just molten core with class fixes. Personally, I think the hype for Season of Discovery could easily return, and it also could easily become the main attraction for WoW again, just if they begin to get a shift on with things. Yet for now, we all remain in the limbo that is Phase 3. Oh well, you can wait there. I'm playing Cataclassic and getting hyped for the War Within, so... It's up to you, but do let me know what you think. What did happen to Season of Discovery in your opinion? Or am I entirely wrong and it's still alive and well? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. But till next time, take care out there, and I'll see you on the next one. As always, if you're new here, feel free to like and subscribe. And on that note, I think I'll say ta for now, and I'll see you later. Alright, there we go, good video. Once again, I feel like at this point I've been talking a lot and um, yeah, I probably chimed in with all of my opinions or at least most of them. So um, as he said, let me know as well in the comments if I am completely wrong. Now for me, I haven't made up my mind. I might play phase four, I might not. To be fair, a lot of my hype has gone. It, it simply just has. A lot of my hype is gone, and I'm not sure if it will come back, and I will say, if I am playing Phase 4, I will be playing it a lot more casually than I was in Phase 3. I will be both approaching it and also playing it a lot more casually. And I'll be uh, approaching it from more of a reserved point of view instead of just being happy, happy, happy. I will be a little bit reserved on my opinion about Phase 4 because I simply don't know. But I'm getting tired of the formula that they're going with. I want new content, and I mean new content, not just upgraded old content. I want something new. It will be, yeah. Either way, let me know once again in the comments down below. Big video by Smooth Jazz Gaming. Once again, go and show him some love as well. Click on the link, it'll be down below. Either way, thank you for watching today. I really do appreciate it. Once again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching. I will see you again in the next video very soon.